In the last video we looked at the pixel command and we also looked at the plot subroutine. So let's look at the rest of the subroutines within our graphics library. Now there's one thing that we need to do and that is we need to take a note of how the subroutines are put together because if we want to use them in the future then we need to know what values are pushed onto the stack, we need to know what order they're pushed onto the stack and we also need to know the actual address of the subroutine. Now the best way for us to do this in my opinion is just to actually write small snippets of the calling function code. So we, we don't need to bother too much about the pixel command because that's the command, it's not the, uh, the subroutines. So we won't necessarily be using the pixel command directly. But here is an example that I've put down anyway of how we would use the pixel command. So from here, this origin 0 cross 8000 to the end, we could copy that and place it into a .asm file. We could run it and it would plot off the pixel on the screen. Now, we've seen that we could use the plot command. So here is an example of using the plot command here. So it shows you what order they get in. We're gonna, we have to push the X, then the Y, then the color, and then we can jump to the subroutine. And when it has returned, we go to the end. And it shows us here the position of the plot subroutine within the ROM. So we've got that information here. Now it doesn't give us all of the information. There's a, a one of the bits of information it doesn't give is the where the local variables within the subroutine are held within the RAM. But we've got that in an Excel spreadsheet and we don't need direct access to that anyway in order for us just to run the subroutines. So I've got an example here of plotting the point at minus 100, minus 100. So again, we could copy this off and paste it into a .asm file and you could run it and you could see an example of it running. So we've already seen these two and I've generated this simply in a notepad. Okay, now there's another few algorithms here and as I mentioned previously we're not going to get into the details of how the actual algorithms work. If you're interested in that I go through all of the details within the Designer CPU 3 course. I'll just mention them briefly here before we go on and have a little look at them running. Okay, so the first one is the Lina algorithm and this has been generated by something called Bresenham's algorithm. So in this instance here, we can push the value x1, y1, x2, y2, and then a color. So we push those onto the stack, and then we jump to the subroutine. Now the subroutine will draw a line between these two points. Okay, so any two points you put in the screen, this algorithm will draw a line between them. And this is quite a nifty little algorithm because we're dealing with purely integer numbers and we're joining uh, the positions together in effect in a rasterized uh, screen which is 256 by 256 and we can just simply put down the values of the locations and again we've got 0, 0 as the center of the screen and it goes to plus and minus 128 plus and minus 128. So that's a nice little routine and we've got all the information in here to draw the lines anywhere on the screen. Now another one that we've got here is the Bresenham's circle algorithm. So again it's done by Bresenham, it's a similar type of algorithm but we can draw a circle and in this instance here we're going to push the x coordinate for the centre, the y coordinate for the centre, the radius and also the colour. And it gets pushed into um, graph underscore circle. It will go ahead and it will draw the circle for us. So it's quite straightforward. Now the next one we've got here is the triangle. So the triangle is going to be similar to the line. The only difference is that we're going to give it a, an extra um, uh, set of points because we're going to have three points for a triangle. So we're going to push point x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3, and also the value of the color. And then we jump to the subroutine graph underscore triangle, 
it runs through it, comes back, and that's how you've got the triangle on the screen. Now the final one is the rectangle. In order to draw a rectangle, we just need two corner points, and then we can draw it out. So we're going to push a value x1, y1, and then the other point's going to be x2, y2, and also the colour. And we jump to the subroutine graphics underscore rectangle, and then it draws a rectangle and then it comes back, and that's the end of the programme. Now, there's one other thing to note here, and that is that this isn't the only way we can write this. So, for example, for all of these, we could get rid of the whole section down here about the start address and defining the X and Y via the DC command here, or the DC directive. So, for instance, if we wanted to pass the values 5, minus 5, minus 2, and 2, we could simply just write the numbers in here. So we could say push hash 5, and then the push hash minus 5, and that'll just push those values directly onto the stack in the same way that we see it written like this, x1 and y1, okay? Now another thing to note as well is that if we wanted to, we could define uh, these values here, for example the colour, we could define the colour in terms of an EQU, so we could write EQU and we could say something like colour underscore uh, black. Now and the black colour is going to be uh, zero cross and it would be FFFF, -F -F, okay? And then we could come up here and we could push the uh, colour. But remember, we won't need the brackets now because whenever it's got the EQU command, it's just going to push the colour directly. So we could push colour underscore black and we could put it in like this. So we've got various different ways that we could come in and push the values onto the stack in order to get the subroutines to run. So that's everything we have in the graphics library. Now, there are other things that we could potentially add. So um, if I wanted to, um, I could generate a fill. So we want to say fill a circle. I haven't done that yet, um, but that's quite possible. And I may well add something like that. Or if you download the CPU and you decide you want to try it yourself, you could try writing an algorithm for a fill, okay? Um, it's really up to yourself. But that covers all of the algorithms here. What we'll do is we'll go on and have a little look at them on the actual machine. So I've already started this circle drawing example, and you can see I've put a little red dot just so you can see the center of the screen. Now this circle here is centered at 40, 40, so we go along at 40 in the x direction, up 40 in the y direction. And then we draw a circle which has got radius 40, okay? So that's the radius here. So we'll still, if we leave it to run, it will generate this circle. Now what I'll do is I'll get rid of my uh, face here on the screen and then I'll just fast forward it and you can see it actually working. So that's it finished the circle and you can see once it's finished it returns all the register values back to their original positions of 0, 0, 0, 0. It's as if the algorithm has never been there. It goes in, does its stuff, comes back out and leaves it the CPU exactly as it was. Now I'm not going to go through all of the other examples but what I will do is I'll go and I'll find uh, some pictures of some of the 
uh, graphics which have already been generated. So let me go and find those now and after that, that will be the end of the video. So here are some of the examples of the graphics that we can display on our machine. Now these weren't generated by me, these were generated by a student who's done all of the three courses and built up the entire machine. And he's also helped me out with lots of good ideas and that's Tim. So thank you Tim for providing these. I don't know if uh, my artistic capabilities are quite um, within uh, the realm of yours at the moment, but I'm working towards it. So um, let me qu quickly click on each of them just to get you a little idea. So there's an example here. Okay, so we can do, you know, the lines, the rectangles, the circles and the dots. And this is a personal favourite of mine. <laughs> the Christmas tree. Yeah, <laughs> Beautiful. It's just beautiful. So uh, now the next one here is, is a bit of a cheat because we can't actually produce it here on our machine. Um, and Tim's machine, he's generated the fill. Okay, so I've still to generate a fill subroutine in the ROM. But that's something I'm looking into doing uh, so that we can fill uh, the same as Tim has done here. Now, there's a, one other thing which I wasn't going to put in because it's not really for this course. It won't be until the next course, but it does give you a bit of a taster. Now, what we have here, if you check online, is something, the graphics that are which are generated from something called the Mandelbrot set. Now, if you're at all into mathematics, you'll probably have heard of that. Now, we can't generate this on the machine yet uh, because we haven't implemented the floating point unit. But I have uh, several floating point unit courses and I intend to implement the floating point unit into the design over the next course. So that would be design a CPU for. But Tim has already gone ahead and he's uh, implemented that entire floating point unit and generated his version of the Mandelbrot set. So you can see here that once we get to the end of the next course, which is Design a CPU 4, and you'll find out all about floating point units and how they work, then we can do some serious mathematics on it. So that's some of the examples, and it wouldn't be difficult for you to go ahead yourself and generate some graphics on the machine using just the simple uh, subroutines which I've so shown you so far or if you do the whole course you can generate other subroutines that do other more interesting shapes for example you could have uh, um, ellipses um, and uh, I can't think of any at the moment but I'm sure there's quite a few that if you've got a better imagination than me that you could come up with so that's all for this video thank you for listening I'll get you on the next video goodbye